Hey there friends and welcome to an update on the Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii for July 18th. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. It is approximately 2.30 p.m. here in Idaho on Mountain Daylight Time. That would make it about 10.30 a.m. over in Hawaii. And it's been since I think early June that I did my last Kilauea update. So I have been uh, checking in on the data, looking at things there, but I thought I would do an, another update uh, since it's been several weeks since I did my last one, maybe about six or so weeks ago. So this will be a fairly brief update of what's been going on in Kilauea. And I think the big trend in what's been happening over the past, I guess, six weeks or so is that we've had earthquake activity continue um, and other evidence that suggests that the the magma system beneath Kilauea is, is pressurizing. It's causing ground deformation and inflation, and it's obviously headed towards some crescendo sometime in the future. Hard to say if that's you know weeks, months, or longer, uh, but definitely we will see some other era, you know activity from Kilauea that could be lava flows at the surface with an eruption that could be magma intrusions like we've seen over the past few months as well. So let's go ahead and look at um, some of the data here. Let's jump right to the USGS update for today uh, and they put these out every single day so great place to look at the latest information, get their analysis on things. So that we're still at advisory level here or, or yellow in terms of our color code, um, just meaning that the activity is, is elevated, but nothing substantial is taking place to indicate that something uh, mo more significant is going to happen anytime soon. So the observations they've had over the past 24 hours is about 37 earthquakes at the summit area and then 79 earthquakes in the upper east rift zone and these are mostly shallow and these earthquakes are below um, what happened well they're a little bit above what's happened over the last few weeks but definitely below uh, a bigger event that took place while I was in Europe so I missed it and didn't do any sort of update and that was they had uh, a swarm of earthquakes from June 27th to July 1st so I thought I'd show you what what those look like so this is actually uh, a graphic here using the USGS website. Here's the Kilauea caldera up here, uh, Hale Mumau, the crater down at the bottom, Kilauea Iki over here, and then this of course is the us upper east rift zone extending off into this area here. So you can see almost 400 earthquakes shown on the map right there, and this is all in a window of time uh, in like four or five days there at the end of June and early July. So this is that earthquake swarm that affected the upper east rift zone. This did not manifest itself as an eruption. Rather, this was uh, interpreted as movement of magma and injection of magma into, into the system here, but not actually producing uh, any sort of eruption. Um, so most of these earthquakes we've had recently have been kind of small, although there was a larger, uh, what was it, a 4.1 that occurred on the south flank on July 7th. Uh, that was about, uh, we can look at the data here in a second, but that was much further down, I think down in here, related to the southward movement of Kilauea. Remember Kilauea is not, it's buttressed on its, its northwest side and its north side's a bit by Mauna Loa and the sheer bulk of Mauna Loa. But with the erosion that takes place along the coastline and no real support here, we do sometimes get uh, movement towards the sea. All the GPS and other data show that this south flank of Kilauea moves towards the ocean and that sometimes manifests itself as earthquakes. Um, and then just jumping right to the analysis here just to make this somewhat brief, uh, following the eruption on June 3rd, that was again the last eruption we had in the southwest rift zone, that was around the last update I did, magma has been repressurizing the storage system beneath Halemaumau and the South Caldera region, activating earthquakes in the caldera south of Halemaumau and in the Upper East Rift Zone. At this time, it's not possible to say whether this activity will lead to an intrusion or an eruption in the near future or simply continue a seismic unrest at depth. And so we just continue to monitor this thing. That's the fun game of watching the earthquake. So let's look at the last, this is the last month or so uh, of earthquakes on the island. You can see Mauna Loa up here. These, of course, this cluster is the Pahala quakes. These are related, these are deeper quakes and, and related to uh, the ascent of the hotspot underneath Hawaii. So you can see these are much deeper, 35 kilometers or so. And what we think happens here is, is the, the hotspot uh, rises up into the crust. It uh, encounters some of the crust here, generates some earthquakes, but then it actually 
gets deflected and moves over and feeds Kilauea directly over here. So let's look at this cluster of earthquakes. We've got about 800 earthquakes shown on the map here. Again, this is for about a month's worth of time. Uh, the lion's share of these earthquakes would have been during that swarm in late June to early July. Uh, just color coding. Um, if they're reds, if we have any reds on here, that would be within the last hour. Oranges are within the last day. So those occurred today, July 18th. Yellows are within the last week. And then the white ones would be within the last month. And you can see there's a few threes in here. Uh, if we move down to off the south flank, we can, we can find that magnitude 4.1 that occurred down here. Um, but these ones here are more likely related to the magma movement and migration closer to the summit region. So there's our earthquake data over uh, the past month or so. And again, defining that upper east rift zone trend, this area right in here. Um, uh, remember, we had when we had that eruption June 3rd, here's just a simple map. Just wanted to kind of remind folks of, of where that occurred. So here is the summit caldera here. And we had a short-lived eruption, uh, fish eruption on June 3rd in this very remote part of the park. This region here, those lava flows didn't uh, flow substantially down slope or go very far, but that was the last eruption we had at Kilauea. And this one was somewhat notable because it's the first time we've seen an eruption on the Southwest Rift Zone uh, for about 50 years or so, since uh, 1974 or so. So interesting there. Uh, a couple fun things I found on the USGS site. Um, they went and revisited this area here out where the fissures occurred from the June 3rd eruption and found that the, the degassing of that lava at depth had produced some very uh, striking sulfur deposits, these beautiful yellow deposits around these cracks and fissures here out in that landscape. So this is presumably looking probably more or less north or northeast-ish. Um, I, pr I presume that's probably Kilauea over there, but not quite sure. That could be Mount Alo. But anyway, you can see some of these uh, here. Yeah, they revisit the site of the June 3rd eruption. This photo looks downrift. Okay, so we're actually looking downrift down the. So that would be Mount Loa there, and we're looking more or less to the southwest instead. Had that wrong. Um, with the June 3rd pad of lava in the upper right, you can see some of that fresh lava up here, and cracking uprift of the fissure had had weak residual outgassing and vibrant sulfur deposits. So very nice photo there from the USGS. Uh, what else do I have here? They did some uh, ground deformation <coughs> analysis using INSAR. And there's, so there's this interferogram using the satellite data that nicely shows. And this ran from June 6th to July 8th. So they flew over it on June 6th. Um, and then again on July 8th. And you can make out that that injection of magma that produced the eruption on June 3rd. So that dike, that fissure, uh, shows up nicely here. But since the eruption, you can see uh, the inflation that's gone on here. So the magma seems to be pooling and accumulating just to the southwest of the caldera proper here up near the summit. And then here's the Upper East Rift Zone over here. So it seems like the magma, for the most part, has been injected into this region here, causing uh, the ground deformation you see there. Looking at some of the other data from the USGS site, uh, this is our just monthly summary. I thought I'd go back a month since I haven't done an update in a while. Um, here's all our earthquake data over the past month, just shown graphically on the map, similar to what I showed you there. There's that big 4.1 there, that big yellow dot. Um, this nice cross section here shows where the earthquakes are occurring. So imagine a cross section across um, you know, across this area here. And so this shows them, the, here's the Pahala quakes, uh, sort of these blue ones here on the edge, these deeper quakes. And then this is the main quakes taking place underneath Kilauea and a little bit into the East Rift Zone over here. Uh, earthquakes in total, so cumulative plot of earthquakes uh, per day. Uh, you can see, you know, background, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 or so earthquakes per day is kind of the norm. But then that ramped up as we got into late June. Uh, reaching a peak of over 500 earthquakes on about, looks like maybe June 30th or so. Uh, so that was that seismic swarm that I mentioned. Uh, and then those dropped back down more or less to background levels. There's been a few uh, high points here and there. And maybe now the, the norm, instead of you know 50 to 100, it looks like it's still a little bit elevated over what it, what it was before. Uh, more days above 100 quakes per day than below. 
and so the average is probably a little bit higher than that so um, and then this is just earthquakes per day so this is time across the bottom and you can see as we get into uh, it's a little hard to tell but you can see there's definitely a bigger clustering right in here and that's that late June to early July uh, swarm that seismic swarm we've talked about there's that big 4.1 on the south flank a little deeper seated uh, than some of these uh, closer to the surface magmatic quakes and you can kind of see the trend there but pretty pretty consistent um, that the seismicity you know peaked here we had a big surge there but it still remained quite elevated as the inflation uh, continues and then getting into I think I've got the the GPS data shown a little bit nicer here um, so this is the ground deformation data I think the big thing to take away from all of these is these all show uh, different time components could be days could be a week could be a month um, but you can see over the past week here at this specific station uh, near the summit that the inflation was taking place so the elevation uh, the tilt was increasing so the ground deformation and that pressurization in the subsurface is causing the rise in the data you see here with the tilt meter uh, same thing if we look over the past month uh, kind of up and down but then as we get into uh, the beginning of July or so we can see a much more steady increase in the tilt uh, if we look at GPS data and we can see the same sort of thing looking at the uplift over time especially this last little trend here this list goes back a whole year uh, but we just want to focus maybe on the last few months uh, past five years maybe too far back but again seeing some of that inflationary trend there as well uh, and these are for Pu'u'o'o so that's further down the east rift zone and that area has been deflating for for quite some time since uh, all the chaos that ensued in, in 2018 uh, and then the last thing here is we can go into uh, and look at specific GPS stations and their data so again you can see starting here February to May you can see that uptick so that inflation uh, taking place there and that's pretty much across the board I won't bore you with all those stations there but if you wanted to check that out you of course could so that was my brief little update on Kilauea keeping an eye on it as always because it is a very one of the most active volcanoes we have on the planet uh, oh and then I guess I could show you here I did load this in uh, I don't know how exciting it'll be but this is the earthquakes over the past week um, so this is just fun to kind of run uh, let's see if I can get this to work right here we go so here's earthquakes uh, you can see them coming in this does not take into account that uh, late June early July swarm so this is more just the past week here we are we're at July, July 14th 15th uh, so you can see some up here near the, the caldera rim uh, a lot here on the upper east rift zone all in response to that pressurization that's taking place here so just a graphic display of those earthquakes coming in over time so uh, so I'll keep monitoring this, as I hope you will as well. If you hear anything interesting coming out of Kilauea, let me know. Um, something I like to watch and keep, keep an eye on. And we'll just do another update when there's enough data or something significant that takes place. So thanks for your time. Thanks for your support of the channel and for all you do to contribute to our community. Take care.